In this series of videos, we're talking about activity-based costing. In the first video, I went over some concepts around activity-based costing. Now I'm going to work through a problem on activity-based costing. So let's get started. Uh, the question says, Zanin Corporation manufactures a Blu-ray player available in two models, the Z100 and the Z200. Despite the growing popularity of the Z200 model, company profits have been declining steadily and management is beginning to think there might be a problem with their costing system. Okay, so a sure sign your costing system has problems, you're selling more, but you're making less money, and that's what's happening here. Material and labor costs per unit are presented in the chart below. Um, okay, so let's uh, zoom in a bit, and you can see the material and labor costs are given. They're gonna be pretty much a given in any question. You might have to figure out the total labor costs, but, uh, Direct material and direct labor are always uncontroversial, right? We know what our material and labor are. Uh, we know the actual costs when the costs are incurred. Manufacturing overhead has to be estimated, and as we discussed last time, activity-based costing is one way of estimating overhead. It says the company's estimated total overhead is $600,000 for the coming period. Okay, so we know that if we're going to compute a predetermined overhead rate, we know that our estimated MOH is $600,000. We're going to divide that by our estimated base, which we'll find out in a minute, uh, what that is. And uh, let's, let's read on. So again, the formula for predetermined overhead rate, the estimated total overhead divided by the estimated total driver of overhead or the application base for overhead. Anyway, let's, let's read on. Uh, it says it applies of manufacturing overhead on the basis of direct labor hours. So, okay, we're going to divide by direct labor hours, the total direct labor hours that the company is going to have. The Z200 is more complex, requiring four hours, uh, while the Z100 is less complex, requiring only three hours. 30,000 units of the Z100 and 15,000 units of the Z200 will be produced and sold. Okay, so I'm going to make 30,000 units of the Z100, and the Z100 takes three hours. So at three hours per unit, that's 90,000 hours for the Z. Oh dear, sorry about my writing there. That's 90,000 hours for the Z100. Uh, then I'm going to make 15,000 dear oh dear my writing's gone bad units that take four hours each so I'm gonna spend 60,000 hours on my Z200 so my total amount of time that I'm spending here is hundred and fifty thousand hours again uh, we needed to know the estimated base and the estimated base is based on the total direct labor hours so I look at the problem and I say, okay, we're doing 30,000 units. The units take three hours of direct labor, the Z100. Uh, we're doing 15,000 units of the Z200. The Z200 takes four hours, so 30,000 times three, 15,000 times four. Our grand total is 150,000 hours, direct labor hours, I should say. So $600,000 dollars divided by 150,000 hours gives us a rate of four dollars per direct labor hour. That's our predetermined overhead rate. Uh, but let's read on because I'm not even sure what the question's asked. I just, uh, I'm almost like uh, you go to the doctor's office and he hits your knee, you know, and you have that reflex. I, I read that information, I immediately go, oh, I got to do a predetermined overhead rate. So I'm not even sure if that's what the question's asking about. Management is considering a shift to activity-based costing. The following information is available relating to the company's activity cost pools. And there's some information about the company's activity cost pools. Uh, number 1A. Uh, assume the company continues to use direct labor hours as a basis for applying overhead cost. In other words, assume they use traditional costing. They're not going to do any of this activity-based costing stuff. Uh, that'll be part two of the question. Uh, but in part one, we're just using our one predetermined overhead rate. Remember, activity cost base costing, you're going to use several uh, overhead rates. With traditional costing, you only use one. 
And so it says, okay, compute the predetermined overhead rate. Well, we've done that. It's four bucks an hour, right? So we've already answered part one, four dollars per direct labor hour. And remember, any teacher is going to want to see some work, but we've, we've done the work up on the page. You can do the work on a separate sheet of paper. The next part, compute the unit product cost. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get to computing the unit product cost. Uh, let's see, where are we? Got to get a new page here. There we go. Got a new page. Let's compute that unit product cost now. Now remember how to compute the unit product cost. It's the cost of the material, the labor, and the overhead. So again, number 1A is $4 per direct labor hour. Number 1B, we're going to take our materials, our labor, and our overhead, and we're going to compute the cost. So, and we're going to do it for our two products, the Z100 and the Z200. So, our Z100's materials cost was 45. The labor cost was 30. So, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, 45 and 30. Our Z200's material cost was 60 and labor was 40. And our overhead cost, well, we just said it was four bucks an hour, but how many hours did it take? Well, for the Z200, it took four hours, and for the Z100, three. So for the Z100, it took three hours, so I'll take four dollars per hour times three hours for that type of unit, it's 12 bucks. For the Z200, it's four times the four hours it took, so it's 16 bucks. So let's total this up. 45 and 30 and 12. 75, 87. 60 and 40 and 16 is 116. So again, just to reiterate, the only tricky step was this MOH that we're applying. Uh, and uh, maybe just do a bit of dollar signs here to clean it up. So we know the cost of any product is the cost of material, labor, and overhead. The material and labor are known, and there we just use the actual cost. Overhead has to be applied, and we said, okay, we're going to apply overhead using one overhead rate. That This is a traditional costing method, uh, and we're going to apply it based on direct labor hours. So we figure out our cost per hour is $4 an hour, and then we say, okay, the Z100 takes three hours, so $4 per hour times three is 12. Uh, the Z200 takes four hours, so four dollars per hour times four is 16, and we have our product cost. The Z200 costs us 116 bucks, the Z100 87 bucks. This is traditional costing, and this is what most companies use, but if they're having problems with their costing system, or if they're not feeling good about the cost numbers, it might be worth it for them to try activity-based costing. It's very expensive, so most companies don't want to do it, but it, it does produce more accurate figures or potentially produces more accurate figures. I'm going to stop the video here. In the next video, we'll walk through the rest of the problem. We'll complete the activity-based costing section of this problem.